Hey man, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. Let me go share this. I think we have a wonderful topic today. It should, it should pop up in your life here, like it's just doing mine. Hey man, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. Please share this video. Invite. Share, invite, share, invite, please. Hey man, what's going on everybody, all who are tuned in, once again, this is the Seed Talk, and it's all, all you guys know how we do it today, what's, what we call it, the lunchtime special, it's your boy Minister Ali, and I'm here with my big brother, Dwayne Hunter, hey amen, and we come to just spread God's truth, hey amen, we come to spread God's truth and, you know, cause up a stir. No, I'm just playing. We didn't come here to do that. But before we get started, you know, I go before God in a brief prayer. So, Heavenly Father, thank you uh, again for this this opportunity, this platform uh, to reach your people with your truth. Lord God, we just thank you for even seeing us fit to be agents or ambassadors of your word, Lord, and to represent you in the way that's pleasing to you. Lord, we praise you because you are worthy of every praise and all praise, Lord. And uh, we dare not give what's due to you to any other. Lord, we just ask that you keep our minds from straying to the left or right and keep it on that narrow path so that we may speak those things which are edifying and uplifting. Lord, for we just want to come and, and give understanding, Lord, and to gain an understanding, God. And to all those who are listening, Lord, we just ask that you give them a blessing on today according to your word and your will for their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. So today we got a great topic. All right, let's just get straight into it. We got a great topic. Y'all gonna have to excuse me. I'm kind of congested. I don't want to say I'm sick. You know, like 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 we say, you know, don't don't claim it. You know, but excuse me. So today we got a great topic, and it's dealing with love because today. In this society, or which throughout throughout humanity, the love, the word love has been misconstrued, and and people have added their own misconceptions and perceptions to this thing. And but I I don't know where <laughs> my brother here going because he he got a great understanding of it or a great twist to it uh, that's going to uh, help us all gain a great understanding of of this thing called love, as our pastor Bice would say, because today we live in. In the culture where love is thrown around so loosely, or love is used uh, as a as a term of endearment, or it has to do with the physical nature, which we want to see and seek <laughs> <laughs> and seek to gain clarity. Oh, that's funny. All right, we want to gain clarity <laughs> of this thing called love. So let's me and my brother we're going to dialogue, and we want y'all to comment too. So please like and share this video. Okay, please like and share this video and invite at least three people you know. So the first question I'm going to ask to my brother and to the audience, all right, what is love in your in your opinion? All right? Usually we don't we don't we don't deal with opinions, but everyone's opinionated whether they like it or not. But we want to deal with we let's let's see where your minds are. What is what is love? All right? So comment in the section below what is love? All right? What is love? I was I was laughing because when you were saying like people just use the word love for, for anything, like I, I was imagining like a uh, husband and wife, and the wife is like, "I love you, babe," and then like <laughs> a TV show come on, and she like, "I love this TV show," <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, "Dang, if you feel the same way about me that you do about oh, a, my goodness. about a slice of pizza, then that's not good." Wow. 
But anyway, that's why I was chuckling. But just going into the word, you know, the word gives us examples of what love is, right? Yes. And the greatest act of love, it said, was that uh, somebody would lay their life down right. for their brother. So I just look at that as sacrifice. So that's probably, you could put that at the top of the list as sacrifice. And, man, and, the, and the reason I asked that question, because, you know, like like what was said earlier, it, it, the term is used so loosely. And, and I guess because we deal with the, the human aspect of, of this, this body, you know, love... It can it can be distorted when it is expressed. You get what I'm saying? Or the meaning right. of it from you know when it was brought to our understanding or brought to our our our, our you know our, our our just our minds. You know, a lot like we deal with. And um, the first let me let me say is the first aspect of love I understood from a a, a, a poetic perspective was with Romeo and Juliet. Right. right, and you know the culture they come from. They have you know the three aspects of love: agape, eros, phileo, right. and stuff like that. But I believe God's love supersedes all of that because those three loves deal with the human nature. Right, and I think the love that we, us Christians, tend to want to express is a love that the world understands. You know, which is giving or you know doing this with you and doing that. You know, but I'm learning that the love. All right, love. This is just my my understanding. Love and and God are synonymous because the Bible, like we just stated, God is love. Right. All right, and He is the Word. So I and I was just reading in First John it said that do all things in love and I mean in word and in deed. Or after He just got through talking about love and such as such as that. Right. You know. So let's. I want to get into it. You know. Like you know, I know you got a great understanding, so let's let's give let's give understanding to the people who are listening. Yeah, right. several people who comment. Sister Ty Singleton said, "Love is an action of emotions." Sister Camille said, "Amen, Man Starley. Love is a very abused word in this world." Wow, and and see, <laughs> Amen, Sister Ty and Sister Camille. And no. I, I, that's what I was just about to t t uh, touch on because the the Bible uses the word love in two different yes, it, yep, that's right, right. It'll say like he loves this woman, or you know he loves the child or something like that. And in that term of the word, it has to do with uh, endearment, uh, affection, mm -hmm. right? And um, then there's the action which uh, somebody else spoke on, which is the way you treat someone, uh, characteristics. The Bible says God is love. Mm -hmm. So we identify what are the characteristics of love. So then we can identify what the characteristics of God is because God is love. So God is those characteristics. Um, I, w I would be careful when we use the word emotion because emotion changes. So if we're predicating our treatment towards someone based on emotion, then when the emotion changes, the treatment can can change. That's that right. goes back to Sister. Uh, I'm just helping you guys out. Um, that goes back to Sister Camille saying, "Love is an abused word." Right. So, you know, I, I what I, I personally I want to focus on the action of it based on what the word describes as loving actions, not the one where it's just like a, a word that describes affection or emotion. Amen. Because as believers. Love is very important. Right. And, and we'll get into later just how important love is as far as the action word. Right. Not the emotion word. Okay, so the action word or the action aspect of love, my question would be, because like I said, I, it seems like both both parties, I don't want to sound political, but both parties, the believers and the, the non-believers can can understand the love of God since that's since that's the ultimate reality of where we are, who we are, and why we are. God's love. But it seems like when we use the word love, because I'm learning that if if everything has a double aspect to it. Remember when Jesus told his disciples, he said, Peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. So the world does have a certain type of peace. Right. Then then now when it comes to love, can the non believers understand the love or do they have their own aspect of love? Or like you said about the endearment, you know, he loved his wife. Is that the only love they can deal with? Or can they, you know, operate in the love such as we do? Well, uh, well yeah, 100%, right? Um, now, it's with a different purpose or a right. different intent. You know, they may not 
have uh, godly understanding, mm -hmm. right? But can a non-believer sacrifice themselves for someone else? Yes, mm. they can. Yep. That's an act of love, right? Um, can a non-believer act in meekness? Yes, they can. That's that's a characteristic of love. Wow. Right? It would do. It it won't matter because they're doing it in unbelief. Right. Right. So obeying the commandments according to unbelief is like the Pharisees. It don't profit you nothing because it's your faith that saves you, not what you do. Right. Right. <laughs> so. We got some scriptures here to all those who are Bible scholars or Bible students, and we want to reference them before we go any further. Um, you got the scripture you wanted to reference? Just um, so we can back it up. Because, like, then again, um, Sister Ty said, treatment can change, but action, the emotion remains the same. Then she said, we can remove ourselves from someone, but still love that person. Okay, so. Right. Understanding I'm getting to see love, love is supersedes, you know, the physical realm, you know, because I, I truly believe we can't have, you know, love without God's word and the gospel, you know, which is uh, an understanding of love is first to, to be communicated, you know, uh, right. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can't know love if I've never heard about it, right. you know, well, true love. You know what I'm saying? No greater love is, is this, you know, than a, a, a friend who, or a man who will lay his life down for his friend. You get what I'm saying? So where, where I get, um, I don't want to say confused, but where I get uh, ignorant is, where, where I'm ignorant is, is how can, how can, you know, mm. what's the question I'm looking for? How can, how can both sides of, you know, of the non, the non-believer and the believer express this this certain type of love if it's if it's ultimately like sister Camille said God is love how can it be expressed can it only be expressed physically or can are they the non-believers only doing one part of the love aspect because they don't hold the word of reconciliation in their mouth so that's where I'm I'm lacking understanding this because like I said if, if a person do for me like the stuff that happens you know, today, like, you, you may give me some clothes. My brother in the world, you know, he do that for me. Is that love, you know? That's that's where I'm going with it. I don't know right. if that's if you're the in need, direction. Right. If you're in need of right. it, yes, it is. Right. If you're in need of it, most definitely, you know? Um, it's like in Corinthians 13, the first thing it says love is, is, uh, let me get there real quick. Love is long suffer it long my right. love is kind me being kind to you is not going to give you eternal life mm. it's not going to help you but it is an expression of god mm -hmm. because if love is kind then god is kind so i'm giving you a, a physical expression of god's characteristic wow but that's not going to save you right so it's two separate uh conversations right right as far okay. as i'm understanding it right now but i think as we talk about it it'll reveal itself even more clear to us right Wow. So the scripture in Galatians 5, or Matthew 22, is, uh, is something that I was thinking about on the way over here. Because I said, first, in order for me to express a certain, the certain love that's necessary for my, my neighbor or my brother, is I first have to have a, a love for God first. Because I don't think I can fully love my brothers if I don't love God. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I... That's where I I, it seems like you were going with right. that scripture, Matthew well, 22. Because it's like, it's difficult to intentionally do something right. if you don't understand it, right? You can wow. do it, with, but you can't really intentionally do it yes. without understanding <laughs> it, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, you know? that makes perfect sense. So, wow. anyway, uh, Matthew 22, starting at uh, verse 36, and it says, Master... Which, and you all should probably know the scripture well. Master, mm -hmm. which is the great law in the commandment? Now, this is somebody asking him about the old covenant law, right? The old covenant law. Which of all the laws and all the commandments in the law, which one is the greatest one? And then Christ says, uh, uh, the famous line, Thou mm -hmm. shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with mm -hmm. all thy soul. And with all thy mind. And then later, the mm. Bible says, the if you love like God, to, obey okay. obey the commandments. So not only is it telling us to love God, but it's telling us how to love God. Then it says, uh, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor yes. <laughs> as thyself. Right? 
Wow. And then it says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So basically, the point of all of these commandments is to teach you how to do these two commandments, right? I can't tell you how to love and you don't That's know right. what love is. That's I have right. to teach you how to love. So you have all of these commandments. Uh, don't steal from that's your right. neighbor. That's, that's right. Because that's right. I'm teaching you how to love your neighbor because <laughs> yeah. you don't know what that looks like. Don't cut it. Mr. Greenwood always That's say. right. Don't be jealous. That's right. Uh, don't act in hatred. Treat people the way you want to be treated, et cetera, et cetera. All of these commandments, the point of all of these commandments is to tr to show us what love looks like, how to love. And then a lot of the commandments had to do with God. Put him first. Don't have any other God before him. Uh, don't uh, blaspheme or don't use his name in vain or whatever all these lo laws were. They're teaching us how to love God. Right. And the reason I bring that up is if all of the commandments of the old covenant law, which is the law of sin and death, were fulfilled just by loving then how much more so is the new covenant law of spirit and life fulfilled mm -hmm. just by loving, right? So it's that important because we're always talking about obeying God's word and, you know, following right. Christ and sticking to what he said and whatnot. Um, but it seems like we talk about all the doing stuff more than we talk about the love, mm -hmm. right? Wow. But loving is what fulfills all of that. It fulfills all of that so it's that important that we have a understanding of what that is because i brought this up on tuesday i can come to church and be faithful to church and, right. and do everything that uh i'm supposed to do according to the tradition or the religion or uh whatnot but if i'm like hateful towards you i'm not fulfilling the the law of god wow sister camille said something that's 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 critical she said, let me get it. She said, I am speaking from my perspective and my personal experience. Love in the world is based off what we can obtain. For example, we love someone because of what we can gain from them. Money, time, attention, um, etc. It is not predicated on what we can give. It is not unconditional. God's love, the love that you can experience when God shows you who he is and you become intimate with him and you study his word and walk according to the spirit, that love is unconditional, meaning that it is not dependent on personal gain. It is not occurring because of something received. It is not based off what something or someone looks like. It is giving. It is desiring to give because of the desire to serve God. And since nothing can separate you from the love of God, that love can never fade. Wow. Amen. See, that's, that's, that's the, that's the <laughs> that thing. That was heavy. We all in the world got it twisted. Real love is the shadow of God for the covenant relationship between man and woman. Yes. Right. Anything outside of that, it don't matter. Come right. on now. <laughs> and, and that's why I was talking about the, the danger of the emotional aspect of it. That's right. Um, because if I love you because you do this, when you stop doing that, that that's I, right. I'm not treating you the same. So that means, basically, did you love me? Basically, I Come can treat now. you with kindness and meekness and gentleness and all of that as long as you're doing what I want you to do. But w when you irritate me and now I'm frustrated, wow! if I treat you based on how I feel, that's right. which is angry and frustration, I forsake ah. love. That's right. Cause now love, I have to man. question, is my love for you genuine or, wow. or is it based off what you're doing for me? Wow. Right? Because if I'm just operating in the love that is from God, then it's not predicated on what you do, to what me. You do for me or what you do to Come me on now. or how I feel or n none of that. I'm kind to, I should be kind to you at all times. I should have low, long suffering for you at all times. And now we're obviously we're not perfect. So I'm not saying this to be condemning to imperfections, but it is the goal that we aspire to. Right. Right. And you, and you said something yesterday or Tuesday, that, that stuck with me about commitment. See, if the only way you can love that way is first if you have the love of God in you and you're committed to that love. If you just, like Sister Camille said, loving based off the experience someone has towards you or for you, then that love is going to change. Right. But because you're steadfast in the love of God, then it, you're committed. Remember, um, it, it just reminds me of um, uh, the Beatitudes. If I do these, then... What they don't, what they do to me, don't matter. Well, he said, "Blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake, for my name's sake." Right. You know. 
Yep, it's just like the marriage vows, as a uh, bishop brought up earlier, covenant relationship. Right. Right. What it say through thickness and thin, health and all of that stuff. Basically, what you're saying is, no matter what changes, I'm still going to treat you the same. Right. Right. And that's the purpose of of understanding tr what true love is. Right. And what that looks like, as Minister Greenwood says, you know, self control. Right. That's based on commitment. Mm -hmm. I have to control how I'm feeling in order to love you properly, right? When we go to church, what is the purpose when we get there? Wow. Are we there to love on each other? Are we there to be kind to each other, to share the, uh, the love of God and the word with one another? Or are we there because we feel like we're supposed to be there? Are we there because, you know, we don't want to be judged or, you know, just because this is our routine? Wow. Right? Because if I'm there for the wrong reasons, but while I'm there, I'm not loving you at all. That's then right. what am I doing? I'm not fulfilling the word of God. Man, I'm man's not fulfilling ways, it. Man's ways seem right in his own eyes. And, and that's the thing. We, get, we love how we want to love, and we don't want to love. When we love how we want to love one another, then it's always going to be chaos, fight, hatred, all this other stuff. But when we love... The way God loves or when we submit ourselves or yield to his spirit, because that's where the love comes from. Right. The love don't come from the human nature. Right. But God's love is the aspect or the reverse of humanity's understanding. Right. And I'll tell you why. Hosea and Gomar is the example of what God would do, but not right. the example of what humanity would do. And see, that's exactly. a perfect example of love based on commitment, not uh what somebody is doing right. for you are emotions. He or obeyed God. Because he made love. a commitment and a covenant with God to love her. That's right. So no matter what she did, he still went and got her because it was based on the commitment. That's right. the marriage. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it did not feel good to have this woman you married Come on now. go and cheat on you and have all these babies and acting crazy. But it was not based on what she did. It was based on the commitment. That uh, he made with God. Wow. You got another. Uh, yes. Sister Singleton said, love is an action of emotion. And see, and, and I think that's, that's where the, my lack of understanding comes from. Because emotions, are, I believe, are different from love. Because if God is love, right, then that means this certain type of love that God, that we say God is, is totally, you know, it just it's beyond our understanding. Remember, I think in Philippians, he said he'd give us a peace that surpasses all man's understanding, right? So that means if we have this from God, then man, humanity can understand it. Even Paul again said, only the Spirit of God can understand the things of God. Right. So if God is love, my flesh can't understand it, but right. the Spirit can. Right. Emotions are based on choices. Yeah. I, what I what I'm hearing because uh, as she repeated it, I would I. What I believe is like, I'm thinking, it is, if you're in the mindset of proper affection, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, I, I get the proper it. Mm -hmm. affection that God has right. for us, right? right, Not changing emotions, like mm -hmm. not emotions in general, but mm -hmm. that proper emotion, right. then love becomes an expression of that yes. proper emotion. Yes. And I, I believe that's where she's going with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would agree with that because God does love us in that a affectionate way right and the way he treats us is based on that right so but when i originally heard the word emotion i'm just thinking of emotion period and generalizing and how they change and whatnot wow. so that's why i was saying you know that's a dangerous thing but if we're just sticking to that that perfect emo emotion of how we're supposed to feel mm -hmm. you know if if, if wow things are the way they should be Sister Singleton said, but you must build a relationship with God in order to completely understand the true meaning of love. Wow. Sister Camille said, commitment to the promise. Amen. Back again to... Uh, <laughs> I'm done. That was to, a mug uh, dropper. Uh, 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 what's his, uh, Gomar. Uh, what's his name and, and his wife, you know? To the promise. Right. No, Basically, but using <laughs> using him as an example of what Christ would do. Right. You know, and and that's where I get, I just like to get you know, cut cut and dry with it. Christ is the the greatest example of what, of what love is because he laid his life down for us. Yeah. You know, sacrifice. Yeah. There's no love that can supersede what he's done for us. 
Yeah. You know, even in Second Corinthians, God was in Christ reconciling the world back unto us. So again, that that love. When we do God's will, that's how we love His people. I, I used to, I always pray, you know, God, if I can't love Your people, then I don't really love You. You right. know, because they go hand in hand. Yeah, how can you, know? you love uh, God which you can't see when you can't love man that you can't see? That's right. But she said uh, commitment to the promise, though. So please come preach that at Love and Unity uh, Church Outreach Ministries in Bellflower. No matter what. A commitment to the promise. It's based off, it's not based off nothing, just based off, you know what, I'm going to be right. committed no matter what. We receive salvation. Uh, based on the promise That's right? right And the hope of the promise Now everything that we do now Should be based <laughs> on commitment to that promise Wow Wow that, that should be the whole focus Of our commitment to that promise Evangelist wow. Baptiste said I'm late coming on It's okay It is my opinion if you love people Because they do these beautiful things for you Then you don't love the person you love When they do for you Now God's love is not based on merit He loves us simply because that's what we choose to do. That's the unconditional part. No good or bad gauge is God's love for us. Exactly. Exactly. That's what God's love is, you know. But then again, you said something earlier. I keep saying you because you be hitting some stuff off the wall. You said God's love is unconditional, but not salvation. Or it was it? Oh, blessings. I said that on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, blessings and salvation That's are not right. unconditional. Come on now. They're, they have conditions that need to be met. That's right. Yeah. And so that's what some of us get... Um, love confused but uh, Jane Gray said we can't say we love God and our actions and lifestyle contradicts what we say Bishop Cox said what glory can God get when we love those who love us that's right oh yeah that's, a, that's, that's what the Bible says that's in the word that's say, what the Bible uh, says even, uh, what is it even uh, the sinners do this the sinners do that yeah but when you love those who you know and the Bible even says, love your enemies, right? Yeah. It, it, be kind to your enemies. Be meek with your enemies. Be peaceful with your enemies, right? If but that's that, from a word perspective, in hopes that that love that showed to them that their life changes based on their need or desire. Yeah, that's, for God. that's everything. Letting your light shine. Yeah. The, the light of love. He's the light. He's the life. He's the love. You letting that reflect. Wow. Right? You can speak without speaking. That's right. Then Missionary Grace said, we can't say we love God and our actions and lifestyle contradicts what we say. Yeah, that's what we talked about earlier when it comes to fulfilling the command, the law, right. the commandments. You right. know, if you love me, then, you know, if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. And, and in keeping my commandments, then right. my love to you will be expressed in that right. or for a, you. That's a big scripture. I, one, I think the church should really focus on because what is... Uh, um, this how, is this how you will know my disciples. That wow. they all have love towards one another. I see so often believers having issues with each other. Being yeah. mean, nasty to each other. You know what I'm saying? Not kind. Just the opposite. Matter of fact, if we look in Galatians, right? The, the, the fruit of the right. spirit. Uh, <laughs> love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, uh, faith, meekness, temperance. I don't see, sometimes I don't see that. Between believers, sometimes I see the top side of this, you know wow. what I'm saying, the works of the flesh. The Sister Singleton said, how can you not get emotional when you hear the goodness of God? How can you not be moved by the sacrifice? The act of the emotion will make you love. Nothing else matters. Amen. I see. I got you now. But see, mm -hmm. that's, I have a question. And please allow me to ask this question. Go ahead. How do we know what love looks like if we don't pick up our Bible? If right. we don't read the word, how are we identifying with love? And how do we know what love is? And that's that's where I'm at right now. While I'm going through these scriptures, where it says this is what love is that that Christ laid his life down, uh, um, kindness, gentleness, long suffering, patience, all of these things, meekness. This is what we should look like. And so often we don't look like that. As Minister Green would always say, "What does that look like?" What does love look like? The Bible was giving us an, a description of what love looks like and what love is. Wow. So all of the commandments, the purpose <laughs> of all of the commandments, as I read in Matthew 22, yes. are to t is to teach us how to love because we don't know what that is wow. naturally. If you see a, a kid, when a kid is born, they don't know what love is. They're selfish. Mm. They, th th there's no patience, no peace. They're yelling and crying and throwing temper tantrums. We have to, we're teaching them. Right. Because what you see... <laughs> 
what you see in a small child usually is just un- unadulterated flesh. Yes, yeah, what you see in this. Un- untrained flesh. Yeah. Right? So we have to teach them those things. And so the word of God is teaching us how to love, right. what love is, what love looks like, what do we need to reflect, what characteristics. And I think that's a, something we really should focus on. So that, that scripture um, in Galatians 5, right? Mm-hmm. So when it, when it says the, this, these are the fruits of the spirit and it goes in the name of list. Right, so I was questioned about this because if 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 believers, if non believers have these characteristics, then that means they have the same spirit we have. Because I, I I believe that person in his own since I shared this video. If you get what I'm saying, so what you're saying is, if believers are referencing in unbelievers and doing the same thing and walking, right? Because remember what, the book we had. Now, now remember, yes. Paul deals with them and let y'all deal with it. But Paul deals with it about the same. So you have people under Judaism, under the law, That's right. who believed in the word, mm-hmm. but they did not live the application of the word. Wow. Yet they look like it, but it's not who they were. Right. And that's a, a lot. Of, you can find a man who abuses his woman. Forgive me what I'm about to say. Beat the hell out of her behind closed doors. But in public, it looks like he what? Loves her. Right. Mm-hmm. Flowers and all that, huh? Yeah, right. come on. <laughs> yeah, but what we have to understand is God is still our father. That's right. And we're still children. He's teaching us the difference between right and wrong. Mm-hmm. Just because somebody is an unbeliever doesn't mean that everything they do is wrong. Right. So can they look like this? Yes, they can because they're operating in what's right. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about salvation and believer and unbeliever. We're talking about right and wrong. Right. What he's given us, the works of the flesh is what's wrong. Mm-hmm. Just because we're believers don't mean we don't have flesh. Believers and unbelievers both have flesh and both can operate in the works of the flesh, which is wrong. Right. And then the fruit of the spirit that's telling us what's right. This is how we should behave. Yes, a non-believer can behave like that if they're doing what's right. But that has nothing to do with salvation. Right. And it has nothing to do with having the Holy Spirit of God in you, right? They're morally good. They're morally good. This is just teaching us what's right and wrong. Right. That's all that is. And that's throughout the Bible. Evangelist Baptiste says, so the answer to Bishop's question is, you won't know what love looks like if you don't study the word of God. Because all the examples are in the Bible. Wow. Back from the beginning. Amen. He showed us Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve never knew each other intimately Mm -mm. until they voided God's word. Mm Mm-hmm. So, again, God's word. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's not much really, or I don't want to say not much, but I don't think, you know, we could go deep into it because we know, man, th- this this topic or this word love, you know, it, it goes to all bases, man, and it gets kind of touchy because, like I say, people, some some people or some of us feel that the true understanding of love is how is how we perceive it. You get what I'm saying? So it's love based off how I perceive it. Right. Even though it's love because I perceive it that way, it's still love. Even though I perceive it the way I perceive it. Right. You I've, heard, I've heard that. Like, well, that's how you express love. Right. But this is how <laughs> I express love. Right. You know, but yeah. there is only one right way to right. express love. And that's what it, the, the, the scriptures show us. Mm. This is the correct way to express love. Right. If your expression of love is to... Murder. You know, yeah, it's wrath and That's strife right. and right. all of that stuff. Hatred. Wow. That is wow. an incorrect expression of love. So you can't validate that. Uh, I mean, as an unbeliever, you can do whatever you want, but we're talking as believers. As, as a believer, you can't validate an uh, incorrect expression um, and call it a correct expression of love because right. that's just the way you do it. Right. Right? The that's, way God, that's why he gives you three areas of it. It's not Bible, but it is Bible if you reference it. Peter, he asked him three times. Peter, love thou me? Yep. Three times. I think um, Sister Gray just, uh, she mentioned that earlier in the comment section about, you know, if we love him, we love his word. And, you know, Jesus asked him three times. You know, I got to really, you know, look at that, you know, because... You know, like I said, everybody got their own understanding, and that's what, that's what I, you know, what that's what gets thrown out there now. Right. You know, if like like we like I said earlier, if you're <laughs> just because it's love, it's love. You know, like we say, love don't change. So that mean I can have my own perception of it. It's still love. 
Right. You know, and and you just said it so so eloquently as, as we say that the examples are all in the Bible. What Bishop just said it. The examples are all in the Bible. Right. Because love breeds redemption. That's where it starts from. Right. So there's no need for me to make up my own version of no. something when no. the perfect version of it exists. Is the word anything right. that I make up outside of the perfect version of it is incorrect. Mm. Right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna intercept right quick. I just he threw the pass. I'm gonna intercept it. Amen. Going back to what I said about Peter. Peter was not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Mm -hmm. right. Peter could only stand God, Jesus, according to his flesh right. and his emotion. Right. So he thought he was saying, okay, my love for you, I'm going to do this for you, that back to the emotion. Right. I'm going to do that. But right. Jesus, the constitution of what he said, love meant to go beyond what your flesh feels, right. beyond mm. what your emotions feel. Right. If you love me, feed my sheep. Right. That means there's going to come some times in your life you when you don't want to do it, but you love still going to make you do it. Exactly. That's back, right. Back, again, back to what the we talked about before. That's love right. based on commitment. That's right. <laughs> Not based on how you feel at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So emotion says, I don't love you no more. I'm tired of you. I want a divorce. Right. Emotion says, I quit. I give up. That's Emotion right. says, I can't take it anymore. But on the cross, the constitution of real love, he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. Right. And asked one time, he said, Father, why has thou forsaken me? But love wouldn't let him get off the cross. That's right. right. That's yeah. right. Even in the garden, he wanted to, say, he wanted to quit. To yeah. garden, but, <laughs> but he remembered but the, the promise. That's right. The commitment to it. Yep. You know? So how many of us then have real love? Right, exactly. And that's why I wanted to talk about this because I really want the body of Christ to focus on the real love. that one thing that, Mary J. Blige that knew about fulfills it. the entire word real, of God. Real love. Boom, boom. No. <laughs> like we talk about everything else so much, even to the point to where it causes strife amongst each other. Come on, man. Wow. But none of that stuff is what fulfills the, word, the law of God. No. Love. love fulfills the word of God. How I how I treat you mm -hmm. is more important than what I do for the organization of my church. But you're only treating me based off your commitment to God. Because if if I'm a believer and you're a believer, what you do to me, remember, don't matter. Right. Because I know you're trying to uphold God's word. Exactly. So if you treat me wrong, then I can't say, you know what, he didn't love me. Like, no, we all in this flesh, but... If I, if I judge you, then I'm I'm wrong. Right. Because what you do to me don't matter. If I'm loving God, then I'm loving you. That's as simple as that. Even right. if you don't understand that I'm loving you because I'm loving God. When we he, stop trying to show each other up, and we stop yeah, trying man. to show what people don't know, yeah, and that's we stop what I was trying going to with that. confirm what we feel, what we know, and if we take the word of God in the first person, to those who are not saved That's and take love to the world, then we would have that many problems we have in the church, in right. the organization. But the organism doesn't have those problems. Exactly. And, and it all, I'm telling you, when, you, when you're when you lacking love in your mind, when I'm looking at now to think about it, David loved God. You know, in Psalms 1, he said he's meditating on the word day and night. Man, that's love right there. Right. So now his his bodily expressions is going to show, you know what, what am I thinking about? What's on my mind 24 hours of the day? I'm thinking about God's word. So if I'm following God's law, fulfilling, I'm fulfilling it based off what me and you look like. Right. You know? Yep. So when we want to put our perceptions on how we perceive love is, it gets distorted. So now my actions is predicated based off emotions. Why? Because emotions change. God don't change. The Bible says he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. And like that's 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 what I want us to focus on. Like everybody who going to church this Sunday, go to church this Sunday and focus on love. Right? And it, it, may, be, it may be somebody <laughs> that, that's coming there and they hurt and going through and loving might be a difficult task for them, but since you focused on love, your love can help bring them out right. of matter. where they are and that's engulf right. them back into the spirit of God. You never know. Right? That's right. Well, it, we it, were yet sinners, man. The Christ Bible even says love covers a multitude of sins. That's right. Which, first of all, expresses the need for a multitude of sin to be covered. Right? <laughs> right? But that's how powerful love is. 
Wow. That's all. But, but but when there's a lack of love, Come on, what man. do we do? We start wow. trying to expose everything and look wow. what this person ain't doing right. and look what this person is That's doing right. and look how many times and this and how they and whoop whoop and all of this strife and anxiety and issue, right? But love covers all of that. Wow. If we were focused on love, those things would not matter. Wow. Missionary Grace said, but Mary J, <laughs> in reference to what I was singing, is singing a different song. But she's, she did say real love. <laughs> That's the world. Of the yeah. <laughs> Wait, for, for, read the rest of it over there. Now, is there a special place in hell for you? You going to pay for what you did to me. That's not real love. Oh, okay. Um, Sister Singleton said, we can never understand what Jesus went through. We can only imagine. Everyone is right about their oh, opinion about love according to the, the word, word of God. I still feel the emotion because I'm always moved by the word, by the sacrifice, and the overwhelming feeling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, I, I, you know, whenever we, sometimes when I just read the story of what happened and I understand the magnitude of what took place on that day, I, I also, it's hard not to get to feel a certain mm -hmm. way at times, you know, but well, I usually get joyous though. Can I tell you what the word of God says? For the joy that was said before the God. Exactly. I'll tell you what the word of God says. About it. The word of God says this. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What you're feeling is not a humanistic emotion. There is a spiritual connection through the word to what you have read that has gotten into your spirit and verified by the word of God, whereby your faith is increased. And as your faith increases in God, the level that you're going or expiring that's coming now causes you to grow spiritually, which means like your natural body. It grows over time. Right. So then faith in Christ in you now is beginning to grow. So what you feel is not a humanistic emotion is what I was saying. Right, right, right. Amen. Wow. It's a deep topic. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a deep topic, man, you know. I know I'm not, I'm just only going to agree with the word and what I was shown. Uh, Sister Singleton said again, that's your emotion. But See, and, 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 and this is what, you know, if, if those who don't know, I'm, I'm in a philosophy class, and this is how they perceive love. Love is an emotion. And, and I think you said you will agree with that because it is. It's, emotions are expressed. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I can't tell you can't. I right. can't tell you um, you don't love me if you're just sitting there like a statue. You there's some type of thing that showed me you love me based off your expression of it. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, no. I, I've, something I've learned is people often are saying the same thing, but they in a different they way. have two meanings, yeah. two different meanings for a particular word. And it causes conflict where there is none or disagreement where there is none. So when we hear the word emotion, we think this. It's bad. And when That's she's right. saying the word emotion, she's talking about something different than what we're talking yeah. about, which causes disagreement. But there is no disagreement based on what I'm hearing, her explanation. That's right. It's just expressed in different words. But you got to stay focused on love. Your phone just died again. Huh? Yeah, it did. I guess that's time for us to get off. <laughs> no, I'm just... <laughs> oh man, but, amen. Yeah, so love, man. What's this thing called love? So I don't know. Did 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 we to all those who are listening? Did we come to a a, a greater understanding of what it is? Because if can can we get near to the expression of what Christ has done when he when he stated. No greater love than this, than a man who lay his life down for a friend. Today, are we really laying our lives down for for the gospel's sake? Right. Or for our brother's sake? Um, I think in Galatians, again, it said, esteem one another higher than your own self. Right. Was that just to them, or can we learn from that a general statement? Esteem one another higher. Is, is, what does that look like when right. we're esteeming? Is that, you know, loving you or God, because I, like I said, if we are obeying the word of God, we can we can truly love the, our brothers and sisters. If we are obeying the word of God, that's what fulfills the law. Matthew twenty two. If if I'm not if I'm obeying God or walking by His Spirit, I'm not gonna steal from you. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna be jealous of you. I'm not gonna covet nothing you have. And I'm not. And, and see, watch this. I'm not gonna worship no other God because they may cause you to stumble. Right. Remember the children of Israel when Moses went up to the mountain, they worshiped, they made a golden calf. Right. Just imagine how many people they caused to stumble because they wanted to replace God with an image. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Their emotions feel good behind that calf. 
they did. Until that hole opened up in the ground and they fell That's in right, it. That's right, man. They wasn't feeling good then. And the sore went out to sow, but the Bible says that one plant, one waters, and God gives the increase. The increase that the individual receives is the emotions of what they receive. They will display, let me thank you, Holy Spirit. They will display emotions based on faith and the evidence of what they receive. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. So that will cause you to be emotional based mm -hmm. on what faith believes. Amen. Wow. <laughs> I know you got smart so, to say, man. Keep teaching this. Because uh, 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 <laughs> well, I know when you cut it off like that, you try to withhold something, man. But right. and, and that's and that's that's the blessed part. So so now now that I'm I'm hearing them, it's in my ear. If we express emotion, it's based off God's word. Right. And not based off the world. Because there's no in-between. You can only express something. Two influences. There's right. only two things that can influence the way we express. Uh, the way how we move or talk or think. is the spirit of the world, which is governed by Satan. The prince of this world. Or God's spirit. Which in Isaiah 9 and 6 says, governs our lives. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was just thinking in my head. Like, boom, whoop, there it is. Uh, uh, everything just came together together right there and while I was thinking that uh, Evangelist Baptiste typed on there boom at the same time <laughs> I was that's right. thinking that that's what I'm laughing that's about. right so there's no, no no in between so now the question should be why are you expressing love what's your who, who, what's the intent like we talked about last show what's the intent of your love right are you expressing love based on like something that just happened in the world or right. according to your flesh wow like wow I just got a uh, check in the mail. I'm happy, so I'm expressing love. But that's not real because it's based on something according to your flesh. That's world. right. But if you're expressing love when you based, on, no, just... <laughs> based on your commitment to God, right? And that spiritual reaction mm -hmm. you get from the Holy Spirit, which is what uh, she was talking about earlier, then it's on point. That's right. I like because. It. We can't, we can't, we as believers, now I'm, I'm, when I say we, I'm talking for those of us who, who are believers the in the Gospels, all right? We can't express love without mentioning, watch this, ex mentioning what the true love is, where we get our expression of love from. I'm only expressing love to you because I want to see you redeemed. You get what I'm saying? Because the Gospel is to be communicated first. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right. You know? Amen. So be, uh, before we close, I do want to read through this uh, Corinthians 13. Um, and we can go from there. But uh, it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of That's angels, it, right, and have not love, I become as sounding brass, and tingling symbol yeah right we talk about that at church so much so much emphasis in so many churches are put on tongues wow. but tongues don't fulfill the law of god love does and though i have the gift of prophecy that's right and understand all mysteries and all knowledge right <laughs> and though i have all faith come on man. Look, these are the things we talk about people prophesying understanding all the mysteries and having all the knowledge and wisdom of god and strong faith right wow but if you don't have, have love, love come on, man. you're nothing. Those things don't fulfill the law of God. Love does. According to Matthew 22, 36 through 40, which we read earlier. Right? <laughs> this should be And like though I bestow all my goods to feed on, the poor, man. and I give That's my body to, the, to be burned, That's right. if I have no love, it profits me nothing. Right? You can do all of the the outreaches where you're wow, feeding okay. the homeless people and donating clothes and all of that none of that fulfills the law of god oh. love does you can do everything on this list you can preach prophesy pray feed the homeless do all of that and still treat your brother like you don't care two pennies about wow. him and if you do that you are not fulfilling the law of God. <laughs> well, you what mean love is he talking that? About? That's right. Because now the, I'm about to get into the, but, what love is he talking about? The world. He's people, about to explain the love that he's talking about right now. We're about to go people in the world who uh -huh. donate to charity, they give, they give, they give, they give. But we know this is written to believers, so we ain't gonna get on that topic. The reason I say what love, and I want you to read it, because Paul deals with this in Romans one sixteen. 
before he even gets here. Right. When he talks about why he's not ashamed of love. Right. Because love is the gospel. And if we take love and we keep it to ourselves, how dwelleth the love of God in us? And we close up our bowels of compassion and see our brothers and sisters in need. He ain't talking about just economically and financially. Right. So then he goes on to say, uh, to explain what love is. Love is long-suffering, mm -hmm. right? Wow. Do, is, do we see long suffering in the church? Or are people just getting the attitude <laughs> off jump? Right? You, you out, just man. quick to get mad, right? You feeding the homeless, you you doing all of this, you're preaching and prophesying, but you get mad. Soon as somebody do something you like, you know, like you're going is off. Speaking tongues and then speaking another Minister tongue. Minister Ali said that, not me. <laughs> yeah, <Minister Ali. laughs> they got several <laughs> tongues. <laughs> Right, yeah, you got all your tongues down, but you have no long suffering. All that other stuff is meaningless. So the gospel becomes ineffective, is my point. Right, because the purpose of you doing all of that other stuff is for the gospel's sake. But it's meaningless, and that's what the world say. Like, oh, they're doing all that, but they mm -hmm. they evil. Yep. Anyway, the next thing on there, it says, it's kind. Do we see kindness in the church? Mm. Yeah, I'm going to say yeah. <laughs> clearly, get in trouble. clearly we I do. only go to one church but that's all we should see. that's all we should see I'm just playing I've seen people forsake kindness because somebody didn't have on the right thing and yeah, now they man. got an attitude with the person and treating them mean and talking about them in the corner because they sh their sleeves wasn't long enough I'm, I ain't said I'm nothing, nothing you have forsa either. you forsaken kindness right because of your tradition no that's right, man. And, and like I said in Romans five, it says, "While we were while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly." He didn't look upon us to see, you know what? I'm a I'm a die for you, based off certain qualifications you don't have. Right. But I'm a die for you because it's my it's my will for me to do this for you. <laughs> right. The only qualifications we have for him dying is because we were sinners. That might go with people's heads, but that's the quality. If you ain't a sinner, he ain't come for you. Right. If you don't notice that you need God in your life, then he ain't come for you. The well have no need of a position. You know, it just pops in my head. Whenever he heals somebody, he just said, go and, and sin no more. Right. We want to polish people up on the outside according to come on, our man. opinion, tradition, and perception. But he didn't do that. He mm -hmm. just said, go, go and, sin, and no sin no more. Right. But anyway. Go sin no more. And it, it continues, uh, does not seek her own gotta read that whole thing that is great but 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 here the apostle is saying we because the expository is to the church yes but that's figurative of his life everything you read there you can find it in the life of yeah. the apostle paul yeah so he you can only give someone your testimony right so if you don't have a testimony of love you can't give someone a mm. testimony that's right of love. that man got pushed in the mouth that's and, right and didn't go off <laughs> come on man he was just like, hey, That's love, my bad. Right if I knew you was the, uh, the, high, priest. the, yeah. the high priest, I wouldn't have talked to you like that. <laughs> that's, that's humility. That's peace. That's meekness right there. That's expressions of love to somebody who was his enemy. Because he's committed to God. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I got to keep throwing that in there because a lot of us think our expression of love when, when we are not committed to God is profiting us when it's not. If I'm committed to God, my love to you is going to be expressed beyond what you wow. understand. So, right? so if I'm going to, to church or to assembly with believers, but it's not based on my commitment to God and it's based on something else. That's right, man. It's easy for me to walk away, operate. And easy for me to judge hatred. you. As soon as you do something to me, I'm ready to get up out the church and leave because I felt that you offended me. You talked about me. You said something about me. You that means you really didn't. You don't love God, basically. But them love them the ones who always talking about somebody got to love somebody because that's love from the perspective of manipulation for me to control you. Right. Love is not me doing what you want me to do. Mm -mm. <laughs> that's what people. That's what people, uh, one of the big misuses of love is. People have a list of things that they want and like. And then if you love me, you need to do these things that I want and like. Wow. No, I need to do what God told me to do to really you and God. for you. That's really right. And, and that's where... The, Even if you don't yeah, like it. That's where the thing comes in. We, when, we, when we 
when we when it comes to love, we can't look at people. You just gotta look at love. You gotta look at God's word. No matter who we see, what that person done been through, what they done, what they said, we can't look at them. Because if we see them, we're gonna see everything that come with them. Their flaws, their mistakes, this and that. But if we just see love, if love is the forefront of why we if how we look at things, then every how we treat people is gonna be totally different. Yeah. It's gonna be different, man. You know, the lens, man. Look the love lens. That's what we're gonna start. Uh, reference the love land. What you how you how you looking at me? How you looking at me? I wish we could sing. We could make that album. <laughs> the only bitch put the you know? music on the <laughs> love I mean, lens. <laughs> that means. Oh, oh, Sister Ty singing. She said, "Does love hurt?" And you know what? My my theological understanding is yes, it did. Yeah, God says at he chastises yeah. us That's right. because he loves us, That's right. and it hurts to be chastised. That's right. Nobody wants to be chastised. Jesus didn't want to die, but it was love. Yep. It was love, man. Sometimes the thing you need the most is what hurts the most. And root canals hurt. Right, man. I don't know if you need them, but they say you do. I ain't never had one. I probably used to fall them off. Wow. Amen. Wow. But, uh, yeah, man. Love fulfills the law of God. And we are saved by faith. We're going to have to talk about faith one day because that's like the most important thing. That's yeah, what gets you, that's what get you right in the right. door. You can't faith talk about love. love without faith. Yeah. You can't talk about peace without faith. Yeah. That, that's what I was saying. You can't talk about anything without, without faith. faith. Yeah. How can I talk about God's love and I don't have faith in God? Right. So that's why I was saying emotion, from my perspective, that's secondary to love, right. which is secondary to faith. Yeah. So because without, watch this, without faith, it's impossible, it is impossible to please, please God. Exactly. So I don't care about, if you don't have faith, you can't talk to me about loving me, be, t- telling me about peace or anything else. Right. By faith, wow. the elders have obtained a good, a good report. report. Right. So faith is what saves us, right? Our grace through faith. Yes. Right. Martin Luther, by grace through faith, we are saved. So faith is what puts us in the predicament to be our position to be saved, and then love is what uh, fulfills the faith that we have. Yes. Because we're we're putting our faith in God. Which now you can have fuzzy, fuzzy wuzzy feelings. Because wow. you have Christ. <laughs> hey. Now you can be fuzzy wuzzy. Hey, if fuzzy wuzzy was a bear. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, so yeah, we we'll have to talk about faith one of these days. Yeah. Hey man, it's time for us to go. We get in the boot. There you go. You can stop saying that. We get in the boot. <laughs> He's not getting the boot. <laughs> Bishop is kicking us out. All right, man. We love y'all and and please, if y'all got any questions or. I mean, we could keep this going. So if you want to get deep in the comment sections, we'll dedicate our time to really to, to push us closer to God's word. And that's what we're here for. All right. So just leave uh, comments in the section below. Share this video again if you appreciate it, man. We love y'all again because if we didn't love God, we can't love y'all truly. Am I right? Amen. He, he wanted to say no. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> but we love y'all, man. God bless y'all. We hope you have a wonderful day. And just keep keep God's word at the forefront because that's the true love. Amen. So we love y'all and y'all be blessed. The lens of love is the only lens I see you through. <laughs>